Melbourne is a town in South Derbyshire, close to the River Trent, which may have originated as buildings associated with the Royal Manor to the south of the nearby settlement at Kings Newton. Melbourne Castle was constructed on the site of an earlier manor house of unknown date. There is an old tradition that the manor was originally established in about the year 900 during the reign of Alfred the Great, but there is no evidence for this. As recorded in the Doomsday Book, the manor of Melbourne and its lands were the property of King Edward the Confessor prior to the Norman Conquest. The property then passed into the hands of William I of England. After creating the Diocese of Carlisle in 1133, Henry gave the manor for life to Ethelwald, the first bishop. Some time later, the diocese built a palace nearby on the site of what is now Melbourne Hall. When Bishop Ethelwald died in about 1156, the manor reverted to the crown. A royal hunting park close to Melbourne was probably created by King John around 1200, and the king is known to have stayed at the manor house on at least five occasions. John gave the manor and its lands to Hugh Beecham, although they appear to have soon reverted to the crown, being gifted by Henry III to Bishop Walter McClerk of Carlisle in about 1230. The estate returned to the crown on the bishop's death in 1248, and Henry granted the land to his son, Edmund Crouchback, 1st Earl of Lancaster, in 1265. At some later date, the manor appears to have been granted to a Philip Mark, before passing to Thomas, 2nd Earl of Lancaster, the King's son. This was in 1298 when he came of age, his father having died two years earlier. Early references to the house itself are rare, but there are records of repairs to the gutters in 1246 and to the roof of the King's chamber in 1248. In 1311, construction of a stone castle was commenced but was still unfinished at the time of Thomas's execution and along with its lands remained as crown property until it was bestowed on Henry, 3rd Earl of Lancaster, Earl Thomas's brother, in 1327. In turn it passed to Henry's son, the 4th Earl, who became the 1st Duke of Lancaster. At the time of the Duke's death, in 1361, his constable was Ingram Falconer, who received an annual life stipend of £10, a further £5 going to his wife. Henry's heiress was Blanche, wife of John of Gaunt. Duke John confirmed Falconer's pension when he came into possession of the Lancastrian lands, and Catalina, the three-year-old daughter of John by his second wife, Constance of Castile, was given her own room and a Castilian attendant at the castle in 1375. Peter Melbourne was made keeper of the Melbourne estate in 1377 with an annual income of £10. He was granted another 66 shillings and eightpence in 1386 and 10 marks, equivalent to £6, 13 shillings and fourpence in 1395. The last award was conditional on his not meddling with the offices of constable and keeper of the parks, which had passed on to his son, also called Peter. The younger Peter Melbourne was involved in the upbringing of the future Henry IV during the reign of Richard II. He was again appointed constable and steward of the Derbyshire Manor in March 1399, although he gave up his office in April in return for an annuity from King Richard, who had confiscated the Lancastrian estates when John of Gaunt died earlier that year. Upon Henry's seizure of the throne, Peter was confirmed as constable and in October 1399 his annuity was increased from £10 to 100 marks, equivalent to £66 and 8 shillings. In the following year, he was awarded land in Derbyshire, confiscated from Thomas Merck, Bishop of Carlisle, co-leader of the plot against the King. The Duchy of Lancaster continued to improve and expand the property throughout the 14th and 15th centuries. John of Gaunt made significant improvements to the castle in the late 14th century. He had windows glazed in the communal hall and the great chamber in 1392 and 3, along with other works. He repaired a drawbridge in 1393-4 and made plumbing improvements in 1399-1400 using lead acquired as a forfeit two years earlier. The Curtain Wall of Fortified Manor had a drawbridge, a hall, a great chamber, a, cha- a chapel and a bakehouse and the building was in generally good condition throughout the 15th and early 16th centuries. For 19 years a castle served as a prison for John I, Duke of Bourbon, after he was taken at the Battle of Agincourt in 1415. His custodian was Nicholas Montgomery the Younger. 19th century 
local historian John Joseph Briggs claimed that during the Wars of the Roses the castle was partially dismantled by the Lancastrian forces of Margaret of Anjou, but since her campaign was along the line of the Great North Road, it was actually in Melbourne, Cambridgeshire, she sat, not its Derbyshire namesake. In 1545, antiquarian John Leyland reported to Henry VIII the property was in good enough shape that it was described as pretty and in meekly good reparation perhaps following repairs in the reign of Edward IV when Sir Ralph Shirley, a commander at Agincourt, was governor of the castle. When Elizabeth I became queen, she ordered a survey of her castles. A 1562 report told her that only ten castles in the north of her realm were worth keeping, and Melbourne was not one of these. A further survey in 1576 reported that although the stonework was in good condition, apart from one chimney and window, the timbers were perished, the lead roof was full of holes, one kitchen was on the verge of collapse, and another needed its floor replacing. In the same year, George Talbot, the 6th Earl of Shrewsbury, wrote to the Queen to assure her that the castle was in good condition, worth £1,000, and could be repaired for £100. Since he was responsible for keeping the imprisoned Mary, Queen of Scots, and 140 retainers, he hoped to keep, get her moved to Melbourne. In 1583 the castle was inspected again to see if it was suitable to house the captive queen. Although the rooms were sufficient in number and quality, the unfinished building was deemed imperfect at every corner. The large rooms would need subdividing, the floors were earth and plaster, and there was no paved courtyard. So, as being out the doors you are in the mire, for it is very foul and unpleasant to walk around about the said house. In 1584, Queen Elizabeth finally decided to move Mary to Melbourne, only for the plan to be abandoned following the Babington plot to assassinate the English Queen and place her Scottish cousin on the throne. In 1597, the castle was being used as a cattle pound, although a survey of 1602 assured Elizabeth that it was a fair and ancient castle which Her Majesty keepeth in her own hands. The constable's annual fee of £10 was the same as that paid to Ingram Falconer 140 years earlier. The castle and lands were bought for £4,700 in 1604 by Henry Hastings, the 5th Earl of Huntingdon, whose family seat at Ashby de la Zeus Castle was just 6.8 miles away. Melbourne Castle was destroyed between 1610 and 1637 so that its materials could be used in other construction. By 1629, it is likely that all the work stone above ground level had been removed. Sir John Coke of Melbourne Hall obtained permission from the Bishop of Carlisle in that year to quarry stone from the castle foundations. Some of the facing stones were used to repair the weir at King's Mill, seen by some at the time to fulfil the words of a local prophet that the waters of the trench should overflow the towers of Melbourne Castle. The Hastings estate was gradually sold off, and the castle site was sold by Earl Mora in 1811. The castle was built to the east of the 14th century town on a slightly raised location. The area enclosed within the castle's outer walls was about 6.9 acres, but without buildings, other ancillary constructions and orchards, the total area has been estimated to be at least 20 acres. The walls were constructed with rubble, faced with ashlar, and even without their former polished facings, the walls are about 9.8 feet thick. All that is known of the appearance of a castle is from contemporary drawings. Although these may seem fanciful to modern eyes, they are better preserved sites which share some features. Tutbury and Pontefract castles, both have similar gatehouses and chapels, and Tutbury's Mott and Pontefract's curtain wall are also close in style to those in the illustrations. Sandal Castle has a multi-angular tower like those depicted, and this feature is confirmed at Melbourne by foundations which still remain. A section of rubble wall, about 49 feet long and 13 feet high, remains, incorporated into an outbuilding of the adjacent farm on its north side. The ruins and the later farmhouse are jointly Grade II listed, and the castle remains are designated as a scheduled monument. The area to the south of the wall has been excavated to reveal the ashlar bases of two polygonal towers, and the site is on the east side of Castle Street in a private garden to which there is no public access. 
Some of the stone taken from the castle was used to construct the mid 18th century grade 2 list of buildings at 43 and 45 Castle Street and other buildings known to have used the stone and no longer extant include old houses demolished to build the Castle Mill textile factory. The mill, now demolished, was said to have been built on castle foundations up to 13 feet thick. And 15 Castle Street also rests on the old foundation wall. It's likely that the former Melbourne Furnace and the Furnace Farm Barn also used recycled castle material. An early 19th century excavation found underground apartments of considerable extent and superior workmanship, and excavations in the latter part of the same century found considerable foundations in the gardens of Castle Farm. Castle Mills housing estate contains a now covered well, 6.6 feet in width and 49 feet deep, and work in 1961 uncovered massive 16 foot foundations east of the old mill and on the same alignment as the existing wall. Excavations in 1969 to 1971 found an extensive network of walls faced with ashlar, a doorpost, the base of a spiralled staircase and evidence of an outer courtyard. Many stones had mason's marks. During construction works in 1988 Masonry including the rubble centres of two large east-west walls was found in test trenches. Apart from the area of the turret basis next to the standing wall, none of the archaeology is now visible. And the ruins are grade 2 listed, the site is a scheduled monument and there is no public access to the castle remains.